From which country are you? Who is the most powerful person in your country? Today I'm telling you a story about a very powerful man. He was reigning in a kingdom that stretches over 127 provinces from Ethiopia to India. His name was King Xerxes. In the third year of being a king, he invites all his officials to a big party. They have a feast for 180 days. Can you imagine? When this feast is over, the king gives a banquet, lasting seven days, in the enclosed garden of his palace. All the people that are living in the citadel of Susa are invited. The garden is beautiful. It has hangings of white and blue linen, fastened with cords of white linen and purple material to silver rings on marble pillars. There are couches of gold and silver on a mosaic pavement of all kinds of costly stones. Everyone can see how rich this king is. The men are enjoying delicious food. They drink wine from cups of gold. They can drink as much as they want. In between, Queen Vasti gives a party for the women in another part of the palace. On the seventh day, when the king is drunk, he orders seven servants to go to Queen Fasti. He says, take the queen and bring her to us, so that everyone can see what a beautiful wife I have. Oh, that is not a good idea. It is never wise to ask a woman to show off her beauty to men. It can give them very sinful thoughts. The beauty of a wife is a present for only her own husband. Queen Vasti doesn't like the idea at all to show off her beauty. No, she says, I'm not coming with you. So the servants come back to the king, reporting that the queen refused to join them. The king is furious. He asks wise men for advice. What do I need to do with the queen? Then one of the wise men says, The queen has not only insulted you, but everyone. She has set a bad example in not showing respect to her husband. All other women can do the same now. Your wife can no longer be queen. The king likes this advice. He makes a law. Then this law is written down in letters in different languages for all the provinces of the country. Wherever the letter is read, the people know that all wives must honor and obey their husbands. But now there is no queen any longer. After a period, the servants of the king say, Let us search for beautiful young virgins for the king. Let the king appoint commissioners in every province of the kingdom to search for beautiful young women and bring them to the citadel of Susa. Let them be placed under the care of the servant who is in charge of the women for the king. Let beauty treatment be given to them. Then let the young woman who pleases the king be queen instead of fasti. That's a good advice, says the king. Close to the palace of the king lives a Jew. His name is Mordecai. He takes care of a cousin who is an orphan. Her name is Esther. The servants of the king see that Esther is a beautiful young girl. They say, from now on you need to live in the palace. Before Esther goes to the palace, her uncle says, Don't tell anyone you are a Jew. All the young girls that are brought to the palace 
get a year of beauty treatments. The servant who is in charge of the women likes Esther very much. He gives her special food. After a year, it's time for the girls to go to the king, one by one. Before a girl goes to the king, she can ask whatever she wants to make herself beautiful for the king. When it is Esther's turn to go to the king, she asks for nothing. Do you know you are beautiful in the way God has created you? Now the king likes Esther more than any of the other girls. She gets the royal crown on her head. Esther becomes the new queen. Why? Because of the king? No, because of God. He has a special plan with Esther. Do you know God also has a plan with your life?